Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. Today, we have the snake plant to talk about. Now, this plant is something that was requested on Instagram to make a video about. I know a lot of you guys have this plant at home because IKEA sells them, many plant stores also sell them for cheap as low light plants. Now, that means that they're low light tolerant, low direct light. That doesn't mean they don't need light at all. Now, will they do fine? If you have very low light conditions, they're gonna be fine. They might not show new growth or have new growth in those conditions, but we'll talk about that today. Now on the agenda, what we have is their water requirements, soil, what kind of uh, conditions you should be taking care of them in. And the three species we'll focus on are going to be the Sansevieria um, Laurenti. And Laurenti, you know, because they have yellow stripes here. If they have yellow stripes, it's a Laurenti. Even if it doesn't, like this one has some type of pigmentless stripes. Laurenti sometimes do have black stripes, but the yellow markings tell that. And we also have, this one is heavy, we also have the Trifasciata. Now, Trifasciatas are really large, and the Laurenti get also large, but not as large as this. Now, there are some plant stores that sell the Trifasciata as Zebrinas. They look very similar. It's difficult to tell if the one is the other, but usually Trifasciatas, they grow more bushy. Um, they're easier to propagate as far as I know because this one was one plant only. That was four years ago. This guy has been my college university friend, basically. And my grandma gave me one cutting and it grew into this. I did not do any propagation myself. It kind of grew on its own, which was which I'm very lucky about. Today, we will focus on these two as well as the Cylindrica. One thing I forgot to tell you guys is that there are over 70 species of this plant, which is why we are focusing on only three. If you have specific questions, feel free to write them in the comments. I'll try to answer. These are all succulents, by the way. So you need to not treat them as plants that love, love water. They don't love water. Of course they need it, but it's not something they love. Yeah, too much water for these plants kind of means a death sentence. You will kill them if you water them every day. Uh, that's not something they want. Not in summer, not in winter. Winter especially, you should not water them too much. Maybe like once a month. Once a month, not too much water. Doesn't have to be moist, they'll survive. This is about a year old. We watered it, I think, what, seven, eight times the entire winter uh, season. And in Germany and Netherlands, where I take care of these, it is a very long winter season. Now, the weather just started getting warmer. We just entered May. And now I water it once every two weeks, but that's enough. Not more than that. The same with this big guy. Once every two weeks is enough for them. So as far as watering is concerned, you should not water them too much because they will not like it if they just sit in water. Uh, they will die. That's a death sentence for them. And they will not grow. They'll turn yellow and they'll get droopy and they will just completely die. It's not a good thing for them. Now for them with water, just remember that Sometimes you might want to miss the leaves because they will get very dusty. These plants are native to Africa. So because they're native to Af the African continent and Madagascar and um, also South and Southeast Asia, they are, they can be found anywhere from air to desert to tropical to subtropical um, areas. So they're okay with very humid conditions. They're also okay with very dry conditions. It really depends on their species sometimes, but these ones, they get very dry weather in winter. They're completely fine with it. And they get very humid weather right now in my room in summer, spring season, and they love it. So you might want to clean their leaves every once in a while because that's how they photosynthesize. But as far as water is concerned, don't water them too much. If you are someone who overwaters their plants chronically and you don't really know how to you know, measure the water that you give to your plants, because it is a guessing game and it is sometimes difficult to know how much you should give water to this one and to this one because you can't give them the same amount of water this one has a very big pot this one has a very small pot and this one has a well drying pot and soil this one doesn't now those are all things to consider but what you can do essentially is to get a terracotta pot this one has a plastic one that's why I water it less as well because it holds more water the water doesn't dry as fast and plastic containers if you have a terracotta or some kind of earth, you know, pot, it's going to dry out faster and you want them to dry out faster. It might look too dry, but they're going to be happy. Like I just watered this today and I haven't watered this guy in like three weeks and look happy. Now let's talk about the light conditions. I'll show you a good example of what happens if you get these guys, some of them 
to direct sunlight. Now, the desert species of these plants, which are not easily found, don't get, you know, hurt by sunlight. Usually they're found between rocks in the nature. So even the desert species don't get direct sunlight that much. But I'll show you what happens when they get direct sunlight, although they do bind themselves very well. These are very hardy plants. This white spots that you see, those are all spots that were burnt by the sun. And it kind of tore off because it was just, yeah, it just didn't do well with it. They have a few of these because this guy did see some direct sunlight, unfortunately, at some point. I mean, these leaves, they're about four or five years old. So they've seen them. And this has been moved so many times. Ow. <sighs> and they're heavy. So as far as light is concerned, do not let them get direct sunlight. I, in my experience, I don't find that they like it. Um, Sansevieria are not very much known to be plants that love, love sun. They do like indirect light because they're low light tolerant. Now, what does that mean? Low light tolerant means that they do not want very, very bright light all the time. If you put them in bright conditions, they even flower, but that has to be perfect, perfect conditions. And unless you live in a tropical climate, I don't think you're gonna have them flower, but they produce really nice flowers. For me at my uh, region, if they started flowering, I would let it happen for a while, but it takes a lot of energy from the plant. So it's not good if you're not in the right climate, even if it starts flowering. Now here, the spiky parts that I'm gonna show you, well, maybe I can say, do you see like very spiky ends here? Those are new growths. And I have another new growth I can show you. In between, they usually grow out. So where can I show you one? Oh, here, here, there is one. I don't know if you can see it, but right there, that's a new growth that's coming in. And if they have spiky ends, that doesn't mean that they're just, you know, growing little needles. No, they're just growing into those spiky ends. Those like very spiky, just like these. This is just growing it. That's it. Um, they grow very large. That's one thing you should know unless you have a dwarf species, but dwarf species, you usually know at the store, it writes in their Latin name, it's also said, but even if it doesn't say in the Latin name, there are trifasciata um, like this guy and there are Laurenti that are dwarf species, so they don't grow that much, but this one will grow as much as this one as far as I'm concerned. Now, the cylindrica, about the same requirements, really. If you put it in direct sunlight, it's not going to do as well if you just put it in indirect sunlight. Now, one more rule of thumb, and this is a general rule of thumb with many plants that are advertised as low light. That doesn't mean they don't need any light at all. Sometimes I see some of my friends, uh, I go over to their houses and they put the plants in a room, like a bathroom with no window. They get no light. The only light they get is the artificial light that gets turned on every once in a while when someone walks into the bathroom or the toilet. That plant will die. And that is your responsibility. I'm sorry to say it, but low light doesn't mean no light. Low light just means that they're tolerant of lower light than other plants. These are tropical plants that are found on forest floors or in the desert, they're found between rocks. So they like those conditions of having light that is indirect, but they like light, all plants like it. They need light to survive, just like we do. Now let's talk about soil requirements. For these guys, soil is important. I would say have something, maybe you can mix coconut fibers. When you get them at the store, usually they have a good soil. And one thing to mention, when you get plants at the store, they usually have a stole stick fertilizer in them. That's why all plants in a store, and this is a general rule of thumb, will look gorgeous. When you get them at the store, they're gonna look super green and amazing. That is because they have been getting fertilized slowly from the soil. By the time you get these plants, that might have run out. So when you take them home, they might drop some of the leaves that they grew at the store. That's completely normal with many plants. Now with these guys, one thing that I recommend is to have a good drying soil and to at the bottom of the soil, you should have some pebbles or some kind of tree bark or anything on top. You can also put tree bark because sometimes the soil doesn't hold on completely to the water and we'll just let it drain. But if you have a drainage at the bottom and you have some rocks, it will still be fine for that plant to get the moisture of that water until that water runs out or the roots will reach it and actually get food from it. It's very important. As far as fertilizers go, you can get any store fertilizer for tropical plants. The ones that I use, I will make a separate video on. You, you will see how I apply it and it's very easy. And I don't use liquid fertilizer, to be honest, because liquid fertilizers I find are better for actually flower plants like orchids. Orchids love liquid fertilizer, but these guys, they just need normal um, slow release fertilizers. It's totally fine for them. How much to fertilize it? 
you don't have to fertilize them too much. In summer, I do most of the fertilizing. Usually I don't really do any soil changes or fertilizing um, or pot changes in very cold seasons. They don't like that. They are fine being root bound. This one over here, the Trifasciata has been in the same pot for the past four or five years. It keeps growing. They don't really care for being root bound like other plants do. For example, the Alocasia, they don't really love being root bound. Same with some Monstera species, they don't love being root bound, but most of them do. Um, so they are not the topic though. So you don't need to change their soil. Whatever pot you got them in, you can just keep them in that. Now, last information about these guys is the fact that you should keep them away from children and pets and honestly, anyone or anything that might take a bite of them or might snap it off and put it in their mouth. These are toxic plants. I do know that sometimes they advertise like plant stores or online plant stores will advertise plants as, uh, you know, lightly toxic. They're not just lightly toxic. These plants can have bad repercussions for you, your kids or your pets. So just put them away somewhere where no one can reach them to eat them because they, these can't be digested. This goes for many indoor house plants because most indoor house plants are tropical plants that have a mechanism to survive in the wild. That's why nothing eats them, usually. Um, most animals do not touch these plants because they are toxic. It's very specialized species that eat these. So long story short, keep it away from children, somewhere where they can't reach it. If you have children, if you have uh, pets, and if they are known to bite your plants, just keep it away from them because these plants are not very much non-toxic plants as they are sometimes advertised. They are toxic, as toxic as they come, just like the Alocasia, which are more toxic, but we'll talk about the Alocasia in another video. I have four of them in my room, actually five. One of them is still recovering, <laughs> dropped all of its leaves. That's a difficult plant. So your takeaway from this video is the next video we'll make is either going to be about Monstera, so Swiss cheese plant, or Alocasia, the giant taro. And I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, let me know down in the comments below and be sure to subscribe so that you can get the notifications when I post a new video. Bye for now.